problem, it gives us that f is ln of 1 plus x cubed. For part a, it says the McLaren series for ln of 1 plus x is given as x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and so on. And then you have negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n over n. Use the series to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the McLaren series for f. Okay, so we have ln of 1 plus x, and then I wrote that out. Now we're going to find f. So to find f, we're taking x cubed and plugging it in anywhere we have x. So we're just plugging x cubed in for all the x's, and now we'll just simplify. So for f, we end up getting x cubed minus x to the 6th over 2, plus x to the 9th over 3, plus x to the 12th over 4, and then our general term is negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the 3n over n. So here's our four non-zero terms and the general term for f. Part b says the radius of convergence of the McLaren series for f is given as 1. Determine the interval of convergence, so show work that leads to our answer. Okay, so the interval of convergence is centered at 0, and it gives us that the radius of convergence for f is 1. So basically you're centered at 0, you're going out 1 in both directions, so your interval would be from negative 1 to 1, but we need to know is the series convergent or divergent at our endpoints. So we're going to go ahead and check our endpoints, negative 1 and 1. So when we check our endpoints, checking x equals negative 1, we're going to take the value negative 1, and we're going to plug it in for x into our general term right here for f. So you get negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then we plugged in negative 1 for x to the 3n all over n. These are the same bases. We're multiplying, so you can add the exponents. You end up getting negative 1 to the 4n plus 1. So we get this expression. If we started by plugging in 1, you would get 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So you'd get negative 1 to the 5th over 1. So that would just be negative 1. Then if you plugged in 2, you'd get 8. So you'd get 9 as your exponent. Negative 1 to the 9th is going to be a negative 1. When you plug in 3, you get 12 plus 1 is 13. You'd get negative 1 third. If you want to think of it as factoring out a negative, you just have 1, 1 half, 1 third, and 1 fourth, and so on. And that's a harmonic series, and by definition, a harmonic series diverges. So now we're going to check the endpoint x equals positive 1. When you plug in positive 1 for x, you get negative 1 to the n plus 1, 1 to the 3n over n. Remember, 1 to the 3n is just going to be the value 1. So you end up just getting negative 1 to the n plus 1 all over n. And if you'll look at this, as you plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to get plus, minus, plus, minus, making this an alternating series. So let's check the alternating series test. So according to the alternating series test, your b sub n is going to be the non-alternating part. So your b sub n is going to be 1 over n. These terms do decrease. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. Therefore, the series converges by the alternating series test. So since the endpoint negative 1 diverged, and the endpoint positive 1 converged, our interval of convergence is going to be negative 1 less than x less than or equal to positive 1. For part c, first it wants us to find the first four non-zero terms of the McLaren series for f prime of t squared. For f, you have x cubed minus x to the 6th over 2 plus x to the 9th over 3 minus x to the 12th over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of each term. So we take the derivative and simplify. So for f prime of x, you get 3x squared minus 3x to the 5th plus 3x to the 8th minus 3x to the 11th. And then we need to plug in t squared for all of the x's. So for f prime of t squared, you get 3t to the 4th minus 3t to the 10th plus 3t to the 16th minus 3t to the 22nd. For the next part, it says g is the integral from 0 to x of f prime of t squared. Use the first two non-zero terms of the McLaren series for g to then approximate g of 1. So basically to find g, we're going to integrate f prime of t squared. So again, you're integrating, so you're adding 1, and you get 5, and then you put the 5 in the denominator. You're adding 1 to get 11, and then 11 goes in the denominator, and so on. It says from 0 to x, so you're then plugging in x to all the terms minus plugging in 0 to all the terms. When you plug in 0 to all the terms, they cancel out, so you're just left with x plugged into all the terms. So here's g of x. Now that we have g, it says use the first two non-zero terms of the McLaren series for g, and we're going to use them to approximate g of 1. So I took g and plugged in 1 just to the first two terms. 
All right, with common denominators, you're multiplying by 11 over here, you multiply by five over here, and you end up getting 18 over 55. Part D says the McLaren series for G evaluated at one is a convergent alternating series with individual terms that decrease in absolute value to zero. Show that your approximation in part C must differ from the actual value of G of one by less than one fifth. So remember, we only took this out to two terms and we plugged in one, so we wanna look at the next term for error the next term is 3x to the 17 over 17, and we're gonna plug in one to that. And you get three over 17, and three over 17 is less than 1 fifth. 